Welcome back. So we're wrapping up simple harmonic motion, but before we really finish it, I want to give some advanced examples that really apply what we learned. Now, these are examples that I got from my textbook when I learned waves and vibrations. And just to give credit where credit is due, these are going to be from chapter one of waves and vi uh, of sorry vibrations and waves by George C. King. So let's get started. Let's work with one, one example. It says that let's just suppose that we don't know that suppose we don't know anything about simple pendulums, and we're going to assume that the period of a simple pendulum depends on the mass, the length, and the acceleration due to gravity. Which, mathematically speaking, we're going to assume that the period is proportional by some constant proportionality to the mass raised by some factor alpha, the length of the pendulum raised by some factor beta, and the acceleration due to gravity raised to some factor gamma. Now what we have to try and do is try and figure out what this alpha, beta, and gamma are strictly from the dimensions of each unit. So this is a really important thing of uh, unit, analysis, unit analysis or dimensional analysis. So if you'd like, you can try and pause the video, try and work it out yourself, but we're going to be going over it now. So what is the dimensions of period? Those are just seconds, or as we could say, seconds to the first power. And we're going to have seconds on this side, so that means that this whole entire thing on this side has to be equal seconds. But what does it equal? Here we have mass, so that's kilograms raised to the alpha power. Here we have meters raised to the beta power. And here we have meter per second squared raised to the gamma power. So let's try and clear this up a bit by... Uh, I'm going to rewrite this left-hand side of the equation to really drive home or really make clear that this is kilogram raised to zero power times meters raised to zero power times second raised to the first power. And that's going to be equal to, let's just clump all the kilograms together, the meters together, and the seconds together. So we're going to be left over with kilograms to the alpha times meters. Now we have a meter to the beta here times a meter to the gamma here. So we're just going to say that this is meters to the beta plus gamma. And now we're going to be multiplying that by seconds. Here we have 1 over second squared raised to the gamma power. That's the same as seconds to the minus 2 gamma. So now let's try and figure out what alpha, beta, and gamma are by plugging in the respective values on the left-hand side. So comparing the exponents for the kilogram term, we get that alpha has to be equal to zero, comparing the exponents. Now let's compare the exponents on the meter term. We know that beta plus gamma has to be equal to zero, which means, if we subtract gamma on both sides, that beta has to be equal to negative gamma. And now let's just look at the second terms. We get, comparing the exponent for the second term, we get min negative 2 gamma is equal to 1. Which means, if we divide by negative 2, that gamma is equal to minus 1 half. And if we plug in this, uh, that into this equation right here, we get that beta is equal to positive one half. So if we plug in the exponents that we solve for into this equation here, we get that the period is proportional to mass raised to the zero, the length of the pendulum raised to the one half, and acceleration due to gravity raised to the negative one half. Or we can say that the period is proportional to radical L over G. And that's exactly what we found in the simple pendulum video. So this is a neat little problem. We were able to find out what the dimensions are for the period 
strictly based off this, this assumption here and with strictly using dimensional analysis.